students welcome to the next lecture on the real analysis today we will discuss about necessary and the sufficient condition for the convergent sequence myself dr garg working in the school of mathematics tapal institute you can simply follow my youtube channel dr harish garg for finding the various videos on this sequences and series so what is the objective of this lecture we will see when the bounded sequence will be the convergent and similarly the when the convergent sequence will be the bounded that is we will provide we will discuss the necessary and the sufficient conditions for the convergence of the sequence p so the first result is we that every convergent sequence is a bounded the proof is very simple about that we will discuss about the two different proofs in this lecture so that you may able to understand clearly so firstly let a and b the any of the convergent sequence which converges to the l then by the definition of the convergent sequence there exist for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a positive integer m positive natural number m such that these conditions hold now your target is to prove an sequence an is bounded it means your target is to prove this thing so let's start from this uh, left hand side we can write the left hand side to be here now i can express this quantity as of this form an minus l is less than of epsilon r here now clearly says that this mod of an and you can see this is independent of n this is independent of n it means a1 is also be less than of sigma epsilon plus this a2 is also be there and then so on so i can take m as a maximum of this quantity as well as the bounds of the a1 a2 up to the a m minus 1 because this is a bound for m n is greater than of the m but what about the remaining one i can take the maximum bound as here so therefore this sequence is my bound so that is every bound convergent sequence is my bound there is another proof are there how you can prove the second part so again i assume that an is a convergent sequence which implies here i can open this part i can write like of this again you can see this is independent of n this part is again independent of n but this is true only for the greater than or equal to m but what about is less than of the m part so i can consider the less than this for this this consider as a minimum of l minus epsilon and all those previous position and for here it is a l plus m and consider as a maximum so what is the meaning of this this implies k is less than equal to a and is less than here it means this is my bound so that's a simple proof of this the first result that is every convergent sequence is bounded that is every convergent sequence is a bounded sequence but converse is need not be true for example if you consider here clearly say that this is a bounded sequence which lies between minus 1 to plus 1 but here it is a unbound it is not a convergent so it means this converse is need not be true so it means our target is to find a condition which should be implies on the bounded plus something so that it becomes a convergent so our target is to identify which condition should we have implemented on this bounded sequence so that it will always be the convergent so that condition will provide you the necessary and the sufficient conditions so what is that condition is that it should be the monotone the proof is the proof of this part is very simple so firstly assume that a monotonic sequence is convergent then your target is to prove that it is a bounded then your target is to prove this is bounded how you can prove that that's a very simple because as discussed in the previous part every convergent sequence is bounded so therefore an is bounded so you can simply take the proof of this as here like this part as we discussed in the previous case we can write the proof of necessary part what is the sufficient is we assume that a monotonic sequence is a bounded then your target is to prove an is convergent now here it is a monotonic sequence it means it may be increasing sequence or it can be a decreasing sequence so let's start with this decreasing sequence so assume that uh, an is my decreasing sequence you may consider as a increasing sequence that's a similar part are here so what is the meaning of the decreasing sequence the decreasing sequence means whenever n is greater than m an is less than of the am that is opposite sign r now your target is to prove an also once it is a monotonic decreasing sequence it means it is a bounded as well so what is the meaning of the bounded it's a decreasing so it means it is a bounded below 
there is no guarantee about the bounded above or there but here is a bounded monotonic decreasing so it definitely be bounded below that means an is greater than of the l now since it is a bounded below and we can see there exists a greatest lower bound that is called as greatest lower bound that is a glb of an of the sequence an what is the definition of the glb that means there exists for every epsilon greater than 0 such that if glb i consider as a l so it means l plus epsilon is not the upper bound of an what is the meaning of that this l plus epsilon is not the upper bound of this so it means this must be less than of a that is here it means there exists some sequence from this an so that an is less than or equal to a l, l plus epsilon that's the meaning of this greatest lower bound that is you can see now since am is less than of the l plus epsilon so therefore an is also less than epsilon also we know that l minus epsilon is always be less than epsilon because epsilon is greater than zero so but l what is the l l you can see this is for all n so i can write it as this is less than or equal to n or less than n so what is that this and this what is the meaning of this l minus epsilon is less than l minus epsilon less than an this is less than of l plus epsilon what is the meaning of that this means mod of an minus l is less than epsilon what is the implies that, that therefore by the definition this converges to the l that is an is a convergent sequence so if you consider here as an increasing sequence then it will be greater than sign it is a less than sign it is a greater than sign instead of the l plus epsilon you consider as l minus epsilon and so on so then the proof is quite similar to this so there is no need to consider both the proof consider only one of that so therefore the necessary and the sufficient condition for this sequence is it should be the bounded that means what is the condition of this is that should be a monotonic sequence so whenever any of the sequence which is a bounded as well as monotonic it's a convergent P. for example if i consider here it is a bounded that's fine it is a bounded that's true but it is not a monotonic P. so it means this is not a convergent P. but if you consider as a sequence say n upon n plus one clearly say that it's a bounded sequence which lies between here fine so it's a bounded it is also the monotonic yes true it means this is a convergent sequence P. but if you're talking about the convergent implies bounded that's a fine state so I hope you can simply learn this one. We will see the next lecture on the Cauchy first limit theorem. Till then, you can simply like, share and comment on my these videos. Till then, best of luck students. Happy learning.